starting up here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Wow. According according to this, we are live. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, we're good. Okay. So, Nicholas Olson, the <laughs> yeah. full the full snack developer. Thanks yeah, yeah. for uh, thanks for coming on here. Hey, um, no problem. I just want to give uh, my my audience some context before we start. So he this guy's very unique. He's a he's a web developer. He's an artist. He's a bodybuilder. He's a skateboarder. He's a musician. He's a <laughs> he's, he's a he's an Instagrammer. Um, this guy is good at things. I think that's a good way to put it. <laughs> and uh, uh, seems like a very unique guy, a very nice guy. I haven't gotten to know him yet, so hopefully that's what's going to happen in this interview. And uh, mm -hmm. I'd like I'd like to just start by you telling us a little bit about your story and how you how you started, kind of some of your companies because you have two companies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So so just tell tell us tell us your story. Tell us how how you got started doing all that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it it started with like college. Um, I took an interactive media development course because I was like I've always been like into art and music. Um, and when I was in high school, I took like one computer programming course, and I like I I got like a ninety eight in it. So I was like, okay, art and program like computers. I'll just do graphic design. And uh, so I went to school for three years for interactive media, and uh, kind of came out as a glorified graphic designer. Yeah. Um, so like I had like real basic like coding skills, but nothing like crazy in depth. So I got a um, my first job as a junior graphic designer at a marketing agency in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay. Um, I guess I could I could have started there. I'm I'm from Canada. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. By the way, we're on different coasts though. He's on the east coast. I'm on the west coast. In my opinion, the, where, the place I live is much nicer because it's not so cold. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. As you can and see can, from his beard and his hat and the way he's dressed. Exactly. Uh, this is how you dress inside. It gets more extreme when you go out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And I can tell you Winnipeg was very, very cold. Probably the worst place. My brother, um, yeah, my brother went to school. He's a civil engineer. He went to school in uh, Thunder Bay. And he said it was like, it was just the weather is not nice. It's very cold. Um, yeah, just very cold, I guess. Is cold, the way. yeah. yeah. It doesn't 100%. rain much, but it's cold. It's true. That's and that's exactly it. I actually my schooling, my college, I took in Thunder Bay too. So that's funny. Okay. Um, yeah. So I I went to Winnipeg, and it wasn't. <laughs> I stayed there for three years before I was like, I gotta get out of here. Um, but in that time, I'd spent one year doing graphic design, uh, and then after a year of that, um, our our developer quit. Um, quit. <laughs> And so they're like, hey, Nick, you program, right? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so, um, so, so hold on. You just cut out there. So I, th I think oh. what you said was you got a job and they said, uh, so you can program, right? And then you ended up starting to do some programming for them. Yeah. So so our programmer quit. Oh, okay. Um, so our, our programmer quit. And... Um, uh, then, then, then they offered me. Sorry, they uh, they were like, "Hey, like you know how to program? Uh, we we're looking to hire somebody." But they're like, "Why don't we just, uh, you know, upgrade you internally?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I can program." Um, and really, like, I had never actually put out a full website, <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was yeah. just kind of like diving into the deep end. Right. Uh, yeah. So I I literally it was just like tutorials all night long, um, trying to figure out how to do programming, how to like level up real quick. Um, and I ended up doing that for a year. And obviously after a year of doing it day in, day out, um, I was pretty good. Uh, and then uh, a software company uh, was looking for a front end lead and they're like, hey, you do you know, graphic design, you do programming and you know, you're pretty easy to talk to. So we can put you in touch with what the business, you know, uh, you know the business side of it rather than the development side of it. So Development team hired me on, uh, and they were really good about like bringing me up on React. That's really when I got into uh, the React framework. Um, and uh, so again, hitting the tutorials, became their front end lead, redid their entire front end of their software, uh, and then um, and then <laughs> I quit and started my other two jobs, or well, my other two, the other two companies. I'm uh, my boardroom is free. Um, so I'm just <laughs> relocating. Yeah. 
at the co-working space, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about this because this is a very yeah. interesting thing too. He built this, by the way, this thing that you're <laughs> seeing him walk around. This is his, his works place that he, he built. Yeah. Um, exactly. So this is actually, I'll take a quick pan of, uh, of our, probably our prize spot. And that is. Oh yeah. That's, that's where you sit, right? That desk right there. I think I've that, seen you. Uh, yep. Right up there. Yeah. And then, uh, we don't have it on right now, but that water falls down that. So that's pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Wow. Yeah. So I'm just going to go into our meeting room here. This is the kitchen. So all these people, do these people all work for your company? Uh, no, actually, everyone here uh, like is like entrepreneurial style. So um, we have a couple people um, that didn't show up on the, uh, well, in the, sorry, that didn't show up in the feed there. Um, that was, uh, that worked for us. So we have a couple people that are working up on that top area there and in the other spot. So. Okay. Um, but this is like a co-working space. So anybody can, um, anybody can start their own business. It's really like low cost, low barrier, just to help people get their businesses going. So, right. They need a place to work other than a coffee shop or home. By the Ex of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, there we go. That's a better view. Um, yeah. So, um, sorry about all the shuffling around. No, it's fine. We got to see your place. So it's actually kind of a good thing. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, uh, I quit. I quit the software company, and I was like, "Hey, time to strike it on our own." Me and my brother. Uh, so basically, everything I do is with my brother, um, and uh, we uh, we had started up a web development company, uh, like just in the early stages of when I got hired on for the software. So they're like, "That's fine. We're gonna. It's only gonna be a period of time because we're gonna get you to redo the front end, and then you know." Uh, reevaluate after that. So it was a good, it was a good like transition time. So me and my brother started our web development company, Tap a Creative. Um, and then in doing that, we were like, okay, we're like, we're growing, we're getting bigger. We're like we want to start bringing more people on. We can't keep working out of like bedrooms. And, you know, we even had like a nice office in the house, but we're like, we need, we need like an external office. So the atrium was born. Um, we're like, Everything that that showed up was like three year contracts at pretty steep prices, not really like creative or you know conducive for you know fun. Um, right. So we're like, hey, well, like why don't we start a co working space? We can be in it, and it also can be like a business to help other people. So we uh, we made this. Yeah, it looks it looks really awesome. Um, before we continue, I actually just want to ask you something. Is there anywhere else you could sit other than the room that you're in right now? Because the echo is really, really terrible. Yeah. Um, if there's if there's not, I'm I'm sure people aren't going to complain too much. But if there is something, I, yeah, I say go there. You know what? You know, maybe I'll just try it from the kitchen. See how that goes. Yeah, I know this room does. I was thinking that it gets a little gets a little echoey. Yeah, like that's way better. Even right there, I like yeah. anything. Okay, solid. Uh, I'll try not to just yell, so I'm not disturbing. But yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, your yeah your uh, your co-working space. That's that's a that's a really good idea because yeah, like you said, any any place you're gonna go rent is you're gonna you're gonna have a huge overhead. And if you're an entrepreneur just starting your business, that's a cost that's really hard to take in. Like uh, my mm -hmm. workspace is at home, obviously, so my overhead is virtually nothing, which is yeah. a huge advantage, really, because I don't have to pay employees. I don't have to pay somewhere. To, I pay my internet bill, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's beautiful, and that's you know what? That was exactly how we were able to start out because we're like we were just at home, and like you said, like there's no overhead, and we're just like you can grind all day long on a business, and it's like you can make your trajectory like. I'll, I'll like a lot faster just having so like zero overhead. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. tell me, tell me a little bit more about your school. So you went to, uh, you did a creative program. So you were, you were, it wasn't graphic design, but it was basically graphic design is what you said. Yeah. Like they, they did a spread shot with the education. So um, basically what they did was like first year we learned like uh, 3d design, you know, uh, illustrator, some creative programming uh, just like all like, all the kinds of uh, avenues you could probably think of, you know, uh, like, yeah, like animation, 2D, 3D, 
um, app development and just kind of like spread shot you with a bunch of these kind of industries in the field. And then as your three year program got down, you kind of like narrowed it in. So the next year you could choose more courses that'd be like maybe a little more design based or coding based or. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there was, there was programming, but, um, mm -hmm. not, not too much. I guess. Yeah. Not, yeah. It's definitely not. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I knew how to like, let's just say I never even touched uh, PHP or WordPress coming out. Like they taught you JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Okay. So that was just like, you know, you could put together a basic website. Mm -hmm. um, but the, like, um, the one agency I worked for when I was programming used like 100% WordPress. So I was like, okay, I have to learn WordPress now. And, uh, and that's what really I had to dive in and help me understand like a, a lot more of the deeper concepts on the job. Right. And uh, what, what kind of stuff did you study in high school? Like, because uh, you went to school pretty much right out of high school then, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I graduated the next year I was into schooling. So, um, yeah, so what kind of stuff did you take in high school? Was it any kind of programming or just like general stuff, uh, art yeah. stuff? Like what uh, What were your interests? <laughs> it's funny because uh, I went to I went to a very, like I, I'm from the middle of nowhere. Uh, like uh, I graduated with six other kids in my class. Wow. Holy. Yeah. That's like, yeah. I, so I thought I came from like, well, my high school was about a thousand people, but my elementary school, my grad class was 17 people. So um, yeah. I thought that was tiny. So that's <laughs> high school, yeah. six people. That's like, well, holy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally the entire high school uh, was 30 people. So yeah, real friendly. That's so you insane. didn't, yeah, you didn't have choice in what you took. <laughs> No, you're. <laughs> How so, does that but, even anyway? Yeah, yeah. I got all kinds of questions about that, but anyway. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a town of fifteen hundred people, so it was just yeah, real. interesting. So, what was like the the community like then with such a small group of people? I guess everybody knew everybody. Like it must have been yeah. like that. A hundred percent. Like everyone was friends with everybody, pretty much. Like mm -hmm. there, there was like maybe two groups of people, and you kind of just like chose which group you wanted to hang with. Yeah. That's pretty much it, yeah. And so, like, what do you do for fun in a small, small town like that? In on, you know, like the weekends, I like. What do you do? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can definitely attribute piles of creativity to that because, like, my my closest neighbor was probably like a fifteen minute drive from my house. So it's basically like your family is your friends, and the bush is your playground. Um, so. <laughs> We, I mean, me and my brother, we build like tree forts together and we had like a, a snow machine in the winter time. And so like a lot of, a lot of outdoor activities was. Yeah. It's like you get good at like, uh, ent being entertaining, entertaining yourself and entertaining others. I'm sure just because you, you'd go crazy otherwise. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> like that's, I, I, I actually, um, on a different scale, I've seen kind of a similar thing, I think with, um, uh i guess it's sort of where i live like when you go and hang out there's not a ton a ton to do right like you live in, mm -hmm. there's a city but there's still not even like a lot to do so um like i find the people with the most friends who end up with the most friends are the ones that are entertaining themselves like they they know how to make jokes they know how to be witty they're like clever um and it's because like there's not a lot to do so <laughs> you like you're attracted to these people that are entertaining or like they yeah. know how to like make you laugh and things like that um i don't know what it's like in the city it's probably similar but there's lots of different options i'm sure there's like yeah. thousands of groups of people and thousands of things to do but then here it's like oh well i guess we'll go outside because <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah <laughs> oh totally and like and the thing is the only thing you really have is like conversation so it's like yeah well, exactly conversation yeah time to mind like all, like it's funny this little throw out i didn't have a cell phone until i was 19 and i and i didn't have a personal computer until until 19 actually so both of those things i never i never had i didn't even have tv either uh because we were just too far out wow <laughs> yeah so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a, that's another level that's like <laughs> What do you what do you do at night? Because I think um, like in the winter, the days are short. Like you probably only get oh. eight eight hours of sunlight or something. Oh, maximum. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like that would I think about that sometimes because now it's winter and I look out and sun's down by, I don't know, like five o'clock or something. And it's yeah. dark. 
and uh yeah. and i think and it's cold and i'm thinking what the hell did people do <laughs> like 50 years ago when there's I, like honestly i thought the same thing this morning i was like people just like i was like i got up at six o'clock this morning which is very uncharacteristic of me um and i was like the the sun was just coming up and i was like i guess people are like um people would get up now and i was like the people would go to bed at like five o'clock because there's like what candlelight like <laughs> yeah probably honestly probably they would they would work all day use whatever sunlight they could and yeah. then go to they'd eat and go to bed or like whatever just because there was on just nothing to do like that's do, yeah. yeah and it's dark so like what do you do you can't wander <laughs> around in the dark <laughs> <laughs> right exactly oh, i just think it's funny yeah interesting <laughs> okay so uh let's let's talk more about career stuff uh yeah. lost track here um so you didn't have a computer till you're 19 and then you just kind of jumped into it so there's a i think there's a reoccurring theme here in your life you you tend to just do things and uh you commit to them and you get very good at them quickly because you get so committed to them. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a believer in this too. Like I really think that diving in, even though you don't really know what you're doing um, and just like committing because you have, when you have that hanging over your head, you work so much harder. It, it does something to your brain. It like, it just, it gets it like churning in a way that you, it wouldn't happen if you just kind of like dip your feet in and, Oh, I'm not really sure. And yeah. it, that's not, I don't think that's the way to do it. Get in over your head, go crazy and like panic, like self-induced mm -hmm. panic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, like uh, that's, that's what you got to do. So, yeah. and obviously it's been, it's been working for you. You have two businesses now. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, so tell me more about these businesses, the, the details behind them, like the, the create, you made my logo. So how does yeah. that, how did that process, how does that whole process work? Um, yeah, so I mean, like Tapper Creative was the like the web development and branding uh, company that me and my brother had uh, started, well, you know, the before and what caused the atrium. Um, and so in that, we were just uh, we were doing that. We were we had a, like our website out tappercreative.com, and we were taking on all web and uh, like branding and graphic design. So my brother's also uh, a graphic designer, and he studied in Alberta for that. Um, so. I tended to to lean to more towards more web development of uh, of our company, and he did a lot. Like, and he did most of the design. But it was nice because I could be able to, you know, like, you know, give him maybe he, I could bounce some things off of him for the for the designs because we're both both creative and we we had a, like a good dynamic like that. So even with your logo, you know, I had done something up, and he comes over and he's like, oh, maybe you could do this, or and you know what, I would do the same for him with like other branding stuff. So it was like a really good. Uh, mm -hmm. connection between our our uh our design skills together yeah that's awesome i i wish i think about that sometimes and i really wish i had someone like that because um i just started recently doing like a i started a community thing for my website and just a community thing basically you you yeah. pay five bucks a month i only added uh, a pay door because i didn't want too many people to join i wanted it kind of a like a smaller more yeah, focused serious. community yeah, yeah, I wanted to be, even though it's only five bucks. I mean, it's nothing, but that $5 is going to filter out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, so now I just, I have a discord channel and, and we talk in there about whatever. And, and it's been good. That's, that's, so that's kind of mm -hmm. my, cause I have another guy in there. He, he has the same amount of subscribers as me on YouTube. And we, we've been talking and bouncing a lot of ideas off each other. And I really like that. And I wish I had that earlier because it's, it's just nice to be like, Oh, what do you think of this? Or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, just like those little things yeah. that it could have, you could have easily killed an hour with or whatever. And it took two minutes. hundred percent. I think like, and, and you know what, uh, that segues perfectly like the collaboration. Uh, that's kind of another reason why we wanted this space. So, you know, it is like it's month to month. So if you get into the atrium here and you know, it's just like, Hey, I can't afford it or it's just not working for me. You just cancel your plan and there's like no strings attached. So you're not like stuck in a lease or anything like that. Um, but in that you can have like this community of people that are here that are like, you know, you have a conversation with somebody in a totally different field in the kitchen here, or, you know, we've seen a lot of people actually make like great business connections from just being in a space and then being like, Hey, you do that. Well, I do this. And, you know, and then having that back and forth and either, you know, giving advice or opinions or actually starting like partnerships or, or, or new businesses, you know? So yeah, that's the first thing I, I, huge. 
one of the things I thought when you were walking around, I thought that is that 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 would be a great thing because a, a coffee shop is the alternative, really, I guess. And uh, it's like not it's not the same. Like in this place, they're all programmers or they're all like tech entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. that I mean, that could be really advantageous for making connections for sure. Mm -hmm, 100 percent. 100 percent. Um, so your yeah. other company, you got, um, uh, or no, your other, I guess you have a product, right? It's called click code that you built. Click code. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's for sure. Still, uh, it's, it's right on the verge. Uh, there's been like, just with starting the, like starting the atrium and starting, um, uh, well between that and the web development company, we've had like, there's actually another business in there, um, <laughs> that, that took a bunch of, of time. We actually created a, uh, a content based website for our local area here. So for, I live in, this is St. Thomas, Ontario. We started a, um, it's not exactly like news, but it's like, you know, stories and culture pieces and cool events that go on just to like bring life to the arts and culture here. Uh, so we started that website together and then we sell advertisement on that as a platform. Um, so that's established media and that kind of put uh, click code on hold just for a little bit here while well, we got this up and running. Um, but That's yeah. Cool. That's a good <laughs> idea. More, yeah. Um, um, sorry, I keep interrupting yeah. you. <laughs> no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna, I, I was just thinking about this idea. So it's a community, it's a community based, uh, just a website, a platform where you, you, you look around for local events and things to do basically. Mm -hmm. And then you, it's like a message board or something like that where you post on this website and then people go there and, and figure out, hey, I'm going to St. Thomas uh wherever you are and what yeah. am i gonna do friday night is that yeah. the kind of thing yeah so it's a combination we have like a full events page that's dedicated to just that you can like we have a form on the side you can like put in the information for your event if you want it to be listed on our site um as well as we go out and we find stuff and we you know just because we're new and we're starting out a little bit um we're not as known as we want to be yet we go out and we find we're like hey we found this you know guitar builder that has a really cool story We'll go we'll interview them. We'll take some photography and videography, put together an article, and we'll put it on the site and be like, hey, like, you know, St. Thomas, check this guy out. And, and you know, it's an entertaining article and, you know, it, it boosts local business. So we go and we find events like that. That's cool. Um, yeah. Where, where do you get my what comes to mind is where do you get the resources for that? Is that like you yourself going to do these things um, or do you have employees that you send to like one guy goes to take the picture one guy goes to like write the article like how does how does that work for sure actually uh, this endeavor so tapa creative uh, is the web development branding um we actually joined up with two other media companies and we formed one big company to okay. do this project so uh we got together with wang studios and marty lewis photography um so wang studio does all our videography and content writing um along with uh, along with part of uh, Tap Creative and Marty, M yeah, Marty Lewis Photography also does obviously photography and um, and some content writing as well. So between us all, we kind of generate the content. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. so you're the you you and your brother are the company owners though, and they essentially subcontract and do these these articles or media for you, mm -hmm. and then it goes on your platform. Essentially, actually, we we all um, all of that all of the heads of the companies came together into a partnership uh, for established media. So we formed a new company with it. Um, I know it gets a little gets a little technical with with the the infrastructure, but um, we uh, established media has formed like a, a new company with uh, with the heads of all the other companies. Cool. Uh, that's yeah. that's really cool. That's a good idea. I should do that. That's I should do. <laughs> I should arrange something like that in my town because there's nothing yeah. like finding things to do is always a challenge. I think mm -hmm. and um, like I I know because I'm I'm a local and I've lived here my whole life. But if like somebody was to come here, it would I'm sure it would be a struggle to like find somewhere to go and like find the best place to go because really there's only there's like you know say there's twenty bars for example to go to on a friday night there's really only one that you want to go to <laughs> and, yeah. and, and like i know what the one is but i don't think anybody else who was just like coming to visit would know so like right. yeah things things like that would would definitely be cool to know for sure and you know what like, the idea is is super compatible with any you know smaller town that wants to like show off its culture because you know what as somebody that's i've only been in st thomas for not even a year and a half now 
Um, I didn't know about any of these things that were going on. So I'm still finding out all these things. I mean, like there was like a, you know, like an art show like that. Like, that's crazy. I'm seeing these pictures. I'm like, that's, that's amazing. Like that's happening here. Well, that's um, cool. So you're double yeah. dipping here. You're, 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 uh, uh, supplying your business with food <laughs> and you're also learning about these cool places on your own. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. Really fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the concept of double dipping, I think that's actually, uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, that's something that, and uh, even programming, anything, that's something I try and do all the time. It's like, if uh, if I'm going to learn something, try to make a piece of content about it, for example. If you're going to write a blog post, try to make a video about it. Always mm -hmm. try it. I call it double dipping. Try mm -hmm. and do, try and get two or more things out of one thing. Yeah, 100%. That's, I mean, yeah, that's. That's productivity right there. Yeah. <laughs> two, oh, two birds on some. I watched um I watched your your uh, productivity video this morning. Um, I okay. thought that I thought that was really good. Like the way yeah. you described productivity. Um, could you could you unpack that a little bit again for the people watching the podcast right now? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so in that video, um, <laughs> you got to remember. It, but uh, one of the one of the main things I talk about is is being like focused on a task. So there's kind of like there there was this big movement towards like oh yeah you're a multitasker you can be doing so many things at the same time but but really like I think that's wrong I think that's I, wrong but. exactly <laughs> and and like studies showed that it's like you're you can't actually you can't actually think about more than one thing at a time it's just how fast you can flip between them and I was like the biggest problem I found in myself was switching between projects killed killed the time like between going through, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm working on this project and then they want me to switch. And I'm like, okay, I have to reorient. What's this about? Where is it? And so the big, big thing was just choosing a task and setting a time frame around it. Around it. So saying, hey, I'm going to work on this for one hour. And then you're completely focused. Your productivity will go right through the roof because you're like in an hour, I can check my phone. I can see if there's any issues or emails or whatever it is. And having that segregation in your mind just makes you to be so much more productive. Yeah, and I, and I really want people to really understand what he's saying here, like what he means by blocking out time for specific things, like take everything else out of your head, like mm -hmm. everything, oh, that's weird, the light like changed color on me here. Um, <laughs> take, take everything else out of your head, like don't think about your dogs, don't think about anything, because it's like that, that little disruption. Um, I always describe it as like when I'm programming or building something, I have all these thoughts that are just like stacked on top of each other, if the, if no one's bothering me, I can stack it very high and 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 uh, kind of arrange everything in like a map in my head as I'm going. And then as soon as anybody comes in, I always uh, pick on my fiance because she comes in and she asks me some question like, "Did you feed the dogs or something?" And then opens the door and I look and I take off my headphones and then my stack falls apart <laughs> in my head. <laughs> and, and then I look back at my screen and I'm like. What the hell was I doing? Oh no! Yeah, right. It's like, oh no! And that's so that's that's like that's the concept in a nutshell. Um, mm -hmm. You you want to try and eliminate those little things that are going to take a whoops take apart your thought stack. I like to call mm, it. That's and, a good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and I think it's I think it's really it works really well not only for working but for leisure time too. Like mm -hmm. um, I went out for lunch with a, a bunch of uh, friends I went to school with just the other day. And I, I, I planned so that at this time I would stop working and turn off my computer and I don't care. It's, I'm not even going to think about it. And, and I had a way, way better time than I usually do because I was like 100% there. Like mm -hmm. I, was, I was like, I, I, I could feel the thoughts start to creep in and I was like, nope, don't care. No, don't, don't care, think about not it. now. Yeah, not now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, I, and the way you described it in that video was really, really good, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I think like one other big thing for that was um, finding things that uh, that um, that don't add value to your life and then cutting those out. Because like I was finding like I, I used to like, you know, my example on the video was like I troll Facebook and I'm looking through Facebook videos and I'm watching, you know, I, I don't know why these videos come up, you know, like a, a, a rabbit popping a balloon because it bit it, you know, and I'm like, why am I watching this? This adds <laughs> Like, I, I'm not even laughing at this, so it doesn't make me happy. It's just literally wasting my time. So I'm like, hey, I got to cut those out. And I found that I was like, hey, now that I have this much time, I can like, I can do the things that I, you know, either want to do in my free time or be more productive with my work. 
So I think it's uh, I th I'll tell you what I think it is. I think it's I think it's escapism. I think people have a uh, tendency to slip into escapism very easily, mm -hmm. especially when they're stressed out so, and they don't even think about it. They're not conscious of it. I used to find myself doing I like very similar to what you do sometimes. It's like this light is changing color. Um, <laughs> Uh, video games would do it for me like suddenly I would just get like this urge to play video games but it wasn't really because I wanted to play the game it was because I didn't want to think about the hard shit that I was doing it was mm -hmm. like it 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 because it it takes you away from everything and mm -hmm. um and if you're not conscious of it like you just described suddenly you'd be mm -hmm. scrolling through your feed you're not laughing you're not really doing anything it's just that you're you're not paying attention to the yeah. hard shit that you need to do or you think you should be doing hundred percent and that's yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I would find myself doing it with my phone too like I'd wake up in the morning and uh, scroll Instagram for an hour and just yeah. like doing nothing really no. and, and then yeah. I, then I'd start work um, so now I just I just get up and I sit on my computer I turn it on I got my tea or my coffee and I just start to do something whatever it is just to kind of yeah. get the ball, ball rolling because otherwise it's very easy to waste time Oh yeah, and, and that's exactly it. It's like there goes an hour. Like, imagine what you can do with in, in an hour. You know, like it's, an hour of like focused task time is you can get a lot done. Oh yeah, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, you. You still play uh, musical instruments? You played uh, bass or drums? I can't remember. Drums is really where like I started playing drums when I was like six. So that's been like my my initial instrument. But uh, I like, and you know, if you watch my story, sometimes it shows up there. I like recording like pretty heavy metal guitar. So, yeah, I, yeah, I watch I watch your your uh, pre workout pump up sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I yeah. work out too. I've I've been lifting weights for uh, over ten years, I guess. Oh dang! I'm older than you. I'm. I thought you were younger, or I thought you were like older than me. But you're like you're 24, <laughs> aren't you? Uh, I turned 25 in April, so yeah. What yeah. the hell? You're you're an animal. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm 28. I'm uh, what am I? I'm 29 in a while. I'm 28, and uh, I thought you were like uh, I thought you were like 30. You got the beard. Oh, yeah. You got <laughs> yeah. two businesses. Like what the hell? S <laughs> slow down. You're oh, making me look a... bad. Oh man, that's funny. It's funny that you say it because like even me, I'm like I see these guys like and they're 19, they're 20, and they're like hitting these like crazy goals, and I'm like. I'm so behind. <laughs> I'm so behind. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's it happens to everybody. It, everybody, it's, uh, yeah. it's a it's a thing. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so you you start playing drums when you were sorry, how old? Yeah, when I was six years old. Six years old. Wow. Yeah, so do yeah. you still play? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I still play for my church a lot. Um, I. I had my full kit. I I lent it to some friends of mine, and their house burned down. So. <laughs> I'm like, well, drums are expensive too, aren't they? Like they thousands are. of dollars. Yeah, yeah. I had some nice ones too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. You're you're laughing. You seem like you're authentically laughing about it. You're not like, haha, <laughs> <laughs> cringing. Yeah. No, it's it's how life goes. I mean, like I'm like, there's no sense in getting upset about it now. It's like I'll just, you know, th there's insurance money. I'll, I'll I'll get a new set. Yeah, it's it's really no big deal. It's no. it's uh yeah it's it's better to laugh. Honestly, because if you're you're mad, it's just gonna make you more mad. Where does? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna eat you. So yeah. like, let it let it go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so you played and you played in a band. Uh, so you, you graduated high school and then you played in a band for a year before you went to university or or college. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we were called the Engagement. We were just kind of like kind of contemporary music, um, and uh, we all just kind of like hopped in, rented this giant 15 seater van and we just went down the West coast. We had no idea where we were going to play at each night or even crash. We just found people along the way. So it was really just slinging from their hip. That's um, a full, full YOLO right there. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was wild. I mean, it was crazy just like how, how it all happened, but uh, that wasn't, we obviously never, made it anything special so we were all just kind of like oh i guess i'm gonna go to school now <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm sure it was the, fun anyway oh, I, mean, that, yeah. I was unreal like the experiences you have like we just set up in a park sometimes and we'd have like our 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 jambe jimbe however you say it and then like uh the acoustic guitars and we just go to town there was one point when our our, our main singer um 
started learning the pan flute on a 15 hour drive and uh, I wanted to die, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn off this light one sec here. Yeah, no worries. See if you, see if you can still see me. Uh, yeah. It's kinda, yeah, I'll leave it on. Um, so, uh, in terms of a business in a business plan in the business world, do you, do you like plan for Like, do you have targets? Do you have any kind of thing that you're like, you know, metrics, I guess that you want to hit or do you just kind of take it as it goes? Well, when we first started the business metrics were like, if we have somebody on our site or if somebody hits us up, we're like, Whoa. So <laughs> Met metrics weren't a big deal off the hop, but um, as we like grew all of our companies, we started getting really into it and being able to show our clients the value of the traffic has become obviously bigger and bigger in until it's almost like the whole um, the whole point. So if I can go to a client and say, hey, you know, here's the here's your website. We built it for you. You're gaining this much traffic by what we're doing. And that translates to conversion. That's it's huge uh, to being saying like, you're spending this much money, you know, you're spending five, 10 grand on us, but what you're getting back is you're, you're going to be making way more money than that by what we do. So um, how do you, how do you measure those metrics? Do you guys program in systems uh, for the analytics or do you just use tools like Google analytics or yeah, like what do you, what do you do there? Yeah. Uh, so we use like combination, obviously we use Google analytics cause it's, it's very reliable, but um, you know, a lot for, um, well, for the custom stuff, we, we for sure will like, we will put on like custom uh, metrics. We use tools like uh, Matamo that, that uh, are very, like their API is very open. So you can uh, use their system very um, customizable uh, by putting, you know, certain, uh, you know, trackings on like certain events and where they link out to and all that kind of stuff. So you can show like, hey, this is exactly where your traffic's flowing. Um, and we use, and that, that tool also has really good profiling. So they're like, you know, uh, someone comes onto the site and, you know, clicks through, we can see, hey, you're on Chrome on an iPhone, you know, coming from here. This is the location, general, you know, mass is here. So we can get into really good targeting with that. Um, so, but, but Google Analytics does that too, doesn't it? They, they have, they have profiling. Um, like I, I'm, I'm sure they do. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure I've oh, looked yeah. at it. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And it's more of a, uh, the, Google, Google, like Google Analytics does it for sure. Um, but the the tool we're using, Matamo, just... Uh, you just think it does of, it better? Yeah, for certain things. So like um, for the event tracking, we just found it was a lot easier to use Matamo uh, to be able to like put put them on specific ones and then and then tag those. And they show up in a, in a really interesting way. They actually track pieces of content. They show you what pieces of content are there. And then you can go in to see each individual interaction with that piece. So w the customization is really what uh, made us choose that one. Um, you know, if I, you know, diving deeper into Google Analytics and-, and I think you can do that stuff, but I, I, I'm not sure how, I've never done it myself, but uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of, I think it's, it looks complicated. I think like when mm -hmm. I've looked at it and I've been like, I looked around and it, nothing was really super intuitive. So I don't know, this, this, this software might be better. I don't know. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, if someone wants to, if someone wants to even like watch this video, be like, yo, Google analytics, like the content tracking is amazing. Like, yeah, please tell uh, me. Cause I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. Like hundred percent. I was like, I found a system that, that, that works yeah. uh, and it's customizable and it's very easy to see how it all works. So and it's working for you. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what exactly does, like, what are all the things that your company offers uh, in terms of development? Like things that you just talked about? Uh, so, uh, I mean, obviously we do like everything that relates to uh, like web development. So, you know, if you're setting up an e-commerce store or a blog, or you're looking to do like landing pages and, and filing through, we do basically all that encompasses that as well as we do like the full brand, uh, brand custom designs, like front to back. You say you want a website, we'll go through the process of like helping you create your content, helping you organize your content, putting it through, um, you know, our design processes and you know, designing in a way uh, that optimizes the content because obviously content is king. Uh, and then going through the rest of the process, we do like development uh, right to the end where it's, you know, tracking and conversion. So 
start to finish web web development as well as um, you know our, our brand packages. So we do you know you need a logo, you want a business card. Stationary. You made my logo, by the way. Very good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> awesome. That's that's good to hear. <laughs> that would be a bad plug if you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. I mean, it was, it was overpriced and it turned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, he didn't mean that, guys. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, sorry, I interrupted you again. <laughs> do, it, do, it, do it up. Do it up. Um, I, I forgot that we're live and I have a chat. Uh, let me just... Let me just yeah. go. I haven't even been looking. I've been looking at this. Uh, let me see. Oh, we, wow. There's lots to say. Okay. We'll, we'll come. Oh, I got to mute this. I'm hearing myself. Okay. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to okay. this chat because there's lots of questions there. Um, yeah, awesome. Now what the hell was I saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. So what, what do you charge for? Like, uh, you know, I, I just rebuilt my website recently. I claim to be a web developer these days, by the way. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and um <laughs> What would you charge? Like if I wanted to, if I was like, hey, Nick, come look at my yeah. website and tell me what I could be doing better in terms of organization and, uh, you know, what could I, mm -hmm. how? That's that's the kind of thing I would ask. For sure. Um, you know what? So like, I know this, is, this isn't meant to be a cop-out answer, but we do like to work with budgets. So, and not in the aspect of like, um, we do the same amount of work for less, it's basically we like we look at your budget and we say, okay, if you're looking to spend this much money, we can do something that looks like this. If you're willing to spend the more money, we can do something like this. But trying to get it down to like pare down to a version, be like, hey, this is your minimal viable product. If you're looking for a website, you know that usually starts out around you know twenty five to four grand. You know to 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 start out. We we are. <laughs> I know it. Uh, from your expression, it looks like a little expensive. Um, no, 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 it wasn't. It, it wasn't because of what you were the the caught. I didn't think you could see me. I thought when like you talk, only you see you. Oh, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> you see, you've been looking at me. I've been like picking my nose. I got the full frame of you right here. Oh, okay. Um. No, I was the the expression was because you were cutting out. I I oh. I couldn't really hear what you're saying. I think I know what you're saying, but maybe oh. you should repeat that for everybody else. Yeah, for sure. Um. So we work with budgets. Is what I was saying. Um, and, and not in the fact that we'll do, you know, more for less, but in the fact that we say, okay, if this is your budget, you know, you, you can get this, this is your minimal viable product. If you're only willing to spend this much, if you want to spend more, we can, you know, it can look like this or this, you know, as big as you want. Um, so, you know, that, that starting out, you know, MVP usually looks between, yeah, 25 and four, and four grand is like where we'd start out with, if just going for something basic, because we always do custom work, um, you know, we didn't want to be, uh, uh, we wanted to position ourselves in doing like premium custom work. It makes um, sense. What you you're know? saying makes sense. You, you want you want a number to start with so that you know that you can give them an optimal uh, product for mm -hmm. what they can afford. Really, exactly. Yeah, and right? you know what? You don't want to go down the rabbit hole to something that would normally cost, you know. Exactly. Um, and I think like too, and we're like, we're happy to share the business. You're, if you're coming in and you're like, you just can't afford us, you know what? Like we don't judge. That's fine. Like we're not here to just try to like scrape money out of you. We want to get, we want to give you the best product for your money. So, you know, we have a list of, of people that we can refer you to that say, Hey, like these people can do this kind of work for you as well. Um, and we're happy to share like the business in that, you know, aspect. Right. So, uh, and what kind of, uh, do you, do you get a lot of business and, and where does your business mainly come from? We've actually had business from all over the place. Um, I would almost, I would probably say it's about 50, 50. We work with uh, clients from just anywhere in the States mainly. Um, and then also we've done a lot of obviously local work because we're, uh, you know, we're going to business after fives, uh, uh, com uh, commerce meetings. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Um, you go have a beer with local businesses and then you get business by the sound there you, of it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty much 50, 50. Um, and, uh, people go on our site and they're like, Oh, this is great. And they're from, you know, we get a lot of, actually, it's funny. We get a lot of people, um, that would find the company through my Instagram just because I'm a little more well-known. Uh, an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, this wing nut owns a development company. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> We actually, we actually did um, uh, a, a website for uh, a, a new fitness supplement company because 
they were looking up web developers and they saw that I did like fitness too. And they're like, this guy's like, this guy's hilarious. And he does like websites and he's into fitness. Like this is perfect. <laughs> Take so my I, money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have no idea where it's going to come from. So, yeah. So, yeah. um, on, on that same vein, uh, you're a bodybuilder. Yeah. Uh, how did you, uh, when did you start lifting weights and take us down that path? How did, how did that happen? For sure. Um, it's, it's a pretty short, uh, web, or web uh, it's a pretty short fitness career. Um, but I, uh, what has it been? Two years in October, I will have been working out. Um, so we're beyond that now. Um, yeah, that's, but, not very, that's not long at all. You're pretty jacked. Like you're, <laughs> you're very lean. I don't know how strong you are because I don't work yeah. out with you, but you're very yeah. lean and you look big. Yeah. I don't know how, like, what do you weigh? Uh, I'm 170. Oh, okay. You're not as big as I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. I'm also, I'm also only five, five, eight. So I'm pretty short. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To, I thought you were like six feet and probably like 200. Like when I looked at you. Can, can we can we roll with that? Can we just tell everybody that's what I am? I would love to do that. Yeah, sure. That's fine with me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone. So I'm I'm six foot and two hundred pounds. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I did that for two years. But um, after the first year, uh, my buddy, who is uh, my buddy Jake Newfelt, is is uh, one of my best friends. And he, uh, when we first met, um, he was like, "Dude, you got to work out." you should come to the gym with me. And I was like, okay, like I've never been before. Well, let's do it. And so like that kicked it off. And, uh, within a year he was like, dude, I'm doing a competition. You got to do it with me. And he'd been hounding me for months before. And I'm like, nah, man, like, I don't want to do stage. That's weird. I don't know. And yeah. then one, one week before the competition, I was, he, I was like, he cracked me. I was like, fine, I'll do it with you. I was like, I've had like one week prep. Let's do it. Uh, and I ended up winning, which I felt really bad. Cause, um, I, I won that show. Um, and then two weeks later we did another show cause we're like, well, we're already like, you know, stage ready. Why don't we do another show? Well, it took I you ended- a week to get stage ready. So what the hell does that mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> you know, like lean down. It, it really wasn't anything. Um, I was, I like I ate a little cleaner, hopefully, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it looked like. Um, but then, uh, I, I went and competed at the INBF. So international natural bodybuilding foundation. Um, and I won the entire show, which means I got my pro card. Yeah. That's a big yeah. deal. Like that's a, that's a huge deal. People spend like, like fitness people spend like five plus years trying to do that often. Like that's, and these are people who've worked out their whole lives too. It's not just like tried five years to get their pro card. They've been working out since they were like 12 years old. Now they're 20 and takes them till they're like 25 to get their pro card or something. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is. So, you know, it's, it's not very common that that happens, but no. uh, I took, I took that pro card, which means um, you have to win your pro card in the IMBF before you compete in the WMBF, which is the world natural bodybuilding foundation. Mm-hmm. So last November uh, I went in and I competed and uh, at the worlds and I got fourth. So I was on, I, I got a medal, um, but uh, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't get in the top three. So you found your wall. Finally. <laughs> yeah. I finally found it. I was like, all right, you know, it's a, it was a two year career and I got, I, and I got my, I was like, I had my pro card in the WMBF when I, uh, because I could compete at a pro level. I'd already won my pro card. I could. Yeah. You have it pro level forever. I think. Right. Or something like that. Like the yeah, pro card exactly. itself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. So you're obviously, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the bodybuilding world, a lot of it isn't like how long you've worked out for, as you can tell, because he's not worked out for long. <laughs> he's a pro. Um, it's when they judge you. Oops! It, when they judge you, it's a lot about proportions, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a it's a it's a beauty contest, is what it is really. But it's a beauty muscular contest. Yeah. So it's like they look at your you know your shoulder to waist ratio and like mm-hmm. all these and you're like how round your shoulder is in like different ways and like all these different mm. metrics. So Nicholas is obviously <laughs> very genetically gifted. Okay. Just has, say, genetic. has this, this body that they like to look at. And so <laughs> he wins things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect. I, I, I like, I like that uh, terminology. <laughs> that's yeah. Funny. That's, that's cool though. Um, yeah. You probably pissed a lot of people off. A lot of people. They were not happy with me. No. no. Yeah, the judges probably even got some like serious, serious flack for that. I, I yeah. bet. 
Oh yeah, and then you know it's a good thing I didn't know any of the judges, so there was no accusations of that. It was yeah. based on purely just standing up there. And and you know yeah, like I took a couple classes with my buddy on just how to like how to get on stage and like pose right so that you can get the best angles. You know you can out angle people that are even bigger than you. There's a lot right. of like there's a lot of little things that uh, I was lucky enough to have. Uh, you know, my buddy Jake, who who was incredibly informed, you know, giving me all the you know beginner tips that uh, that most people don't get. Yeah, my yeah. my brother's done a show, and uh, so I know all all about this the the posing and all these things. It's yeah, very very important that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. all about how you look on that day too. On like, that day, yeah. yeah. Right in, in the, it's funny because it goes up right to the second people are in the backstage just doing pushups and trying to get like that final pump in before you get like right up on stage. Yeah. But, you know, um, if it's any testament, you know, um, obviously, for sure, I give piles of credit to my genetics. Um, but also, you know, I was in the gym, like, there were some days I'd spend four hours, you know, just because um, when I start something, I get really dedicated to it. Um, and, and like the coding world and like every, you know, the art and music, I just like, I get blinders yeah. on to it, you, go, you know? You go deep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of the same way. Like, uh, I, I just, I'm not able to like, I, I call it, I'm not good at multitasking really. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just not, I can't like, once I like something or I'm into it, I'm like, that's all I want to do. And, yeah. uh, but then when I'm done with it, I'm like, I'm done with it. I don't even yeah. want to look at it. Uh, it's yeah. like, so it's kind of the similar thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to draw too, actually, when I was a kid, I, I stopped cause I started, when I started playing sports, I think that was when I stopped. Um, mm. I wasn't as good as you. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, hey, dude. <laughs> There's loads of people better than me. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to better. Um, so, uh, tell me about what you do for fun these days. You, you obviously work a lot. So what, uh, what do you do in Nick time? Nick time. I was going to say work is fun. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's yeah. an answer. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, like I do, like I'll do, uh, my art is really kind of what I've kept as like my therapeutic, non, non digital fun. Like I like to, I still love to make things like continually. And that's, I think why I like what I do for a job, but, uh, I've, I've been uh, making like concrete planters. Cause I was like, Oh, that's super cool and designery. And it's like tangible. I'm like, I could, I could do that. So making like, yeah, like art like that traditional like painting and stuff like that and recording music are there are the kind of like those are my go-to's when i'm like i get home and i'm like yeah it's like i don't know if i want to program right now i need to just take a break from it i'll like record a riff or you know throw some paint on a canvas or make a concrete planner <laughs> do you uh do you drink alcohol not very much only on like special occasions you should, uh, what I, what I used to do, I don't do it much anymore, but I started, I tried to make my own cider and that I found that, uh, it was a pretty fun thing to do. Like just mm -hmm. to see, you know, you try, it was apple cider. I try to make, yeah. use different types of apples or different mixtures of apples. And it's a very easy thing to do too. Um, I don't know. You might be into that. You yeah. the type of guy that might, might do that. And it's, you know, it's super easy. You buy, you literally buy yeah. like this big, uh, Hopefully you can still hear me. This yeah, big yeah. like container, and you, I, I would buy apple juice. Some people press them themselves, but that's a huge mess and a lot of work. So yeah. forget that. <laughs> um, I would just, I would just go to an orchard and I'd buy like this massive jug of apple juice, and then you um, buy a type of yeast. You, uh, you can look it up, or I can tell you um, if yeah. you're interested. And sure. um, you just literally dump it in there, and you cork it, and you walk away for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, and there's, awesome. it's very, very few things you got to do. You got to like filter it once and um, then put CO2 in it. But that's pretty much it. Like it's a very simple thing to do. And it turns out pretty good yeah. usually. So yeah, that's awesome. I'm for sure looking that up. That's, that's great. Yeah. It's like a cheap, interesting thing to do. And I like building things. I like creating things too. Um, yeah. so that's just, I don't know. It was fun. I thought it was yeah. fun. That's great. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I was like, dude, you for sure got those, like that, that streak of like wanting to make things. I was like, you, you run a content website, like you, you create, you do interviews and you create content to put out there. I was like, that's like, that takes a lot of like energy and work. People are like, oh yeah, just start a blog. It's like, nah, man, you have to like continually come up with stuff that takes like, 
yeah yeah boy. it's it's uh it's it's what i like to do though like i've i've mm -hmm. found about myself anyway if, if i'm not creating things i get like depressed i it's like i honestly do if i'm not like yeah building something at all times like I, even if i'm like going even if i have a job i used to have a job even if i have a job i have to be building something or i get like sad yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. like if i don't have something that is constructive yeah. in my life that i'm like whether it's because i work out too whether it's like lifting weights i'm constructing mm -hmm. my body whether it's um making courses for that's what i do now or like learning a new skill uh reading a book like it's got i used to play with lego when i was a kid i was always like yeah. bu building lego drawing um things like that it's yeah I, yeah but that's just me i don't know yeah. everybody else probably isn't that way i was like dude man i can relate for sure i was like 100 percent. if i'm not making something i'm bummed like to sit like to spend an entire saturday just sitting on the couch watching netflix would kill me inside <laughs> Oh, I've definitely done that yeah. for sure. Well, yeah, yeah. There are times when you need to take a break, but you know what? Like, I think it's like that that deep down inside. Like, if it's like, yeah, if I'm not if I'm not building something, I I, I want to be making something. Yeah. No I, matter what, there has to be like something on the go. If there isn't, yeah. then I'm just like, I don't know. It just puts makes me sad. I guess that's yep. the best way to put it. Yeah. Totally. totally. Um. Completely. So did you did you actually answer the question about what you do for fun? Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah. Um, good. Did uh, so? Are you are you married? Or you have a girlfriend? Or like uh, you have a significant yeah. other of any kind? Uh, I have a girlfriend. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, she's four four months now. Three four months. Oh, you guys haven't been together that long. Okay. No, no, it's pretty fresh. Yeah, I'm basically yeah. married. I've been. Okay. We've been together for. I think nine, nine years, nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Nine years. Dang. Hey, yeah. dude, congrats. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's, it wasn't as hard as you think it is. You just kind of, yeah. you know, you, just find that deal. And you do life with them. Yeah. yeah you <laughs> <laughs> find that person you do life. Hey, you want to do yeah. life with me? Yeah. <laughs> sure, okay. Yeah. Um, like so uh, you're, you're, you're religious. You, yeah, I know you have in your Instagram profile that you are, I, I think it says you're Christian. Um, yeah. I'm personally not a religious person, not because yeah. I think anything of mm -hmm. it. It's just, I, I was not raised that way and oh. I've never, I don't think I've been, I've been at church maybe once in my life. Um, how, <laughs> how big a part does, uh, religion play in your life regularly? For sure. Um, it's, it, it really is like, a, a where I find my identity in it. You know, I think, I think like God made me to create and, uh, he's, you know, he's the one that gets all the credit from all those things because he made me this way. So I'm just like, I'm just using the talents that he's given me. And, uh, it, and it's, it's huge too. Cause like I, I play like music, uh, in the worship band at my church. And, uh, you know, I would, I would give credit to like, I do to God for the, mm -hmm. these businesses and these successes. Cause, uh, you know, every day, like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen and we don't know what's going on and where the clients come in and do it. But, uh, you know, in, in starting these businesses, I've, I've just had to like, trust him that uh he's gonna he knows what's going on because i really don't a lot of the time interesting so, so you just kind of yeah. take it as it comes and and uh somebody's looking out for you that's that's the um that's the outlook that you have i guess mm -hmm. yeah yeah cool interesting yeah i i mean i don't even i don't even know any religious people like personally yeah. really so uh it's always interesting to hear uh different opinions and different ways to think yeah. and things like that for sure. And you know, I'm, you know, if that can be a shout out, like, I'm not, I'm not judgmental of, of people that aren't, you know, like, it, it's not like I'm uh, on this, like, horse being like, what are y'all doing? You know, find like, God or die. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't believe in that. <laughs> but that, well, that that's a good impression. Yeah, you know, so. Cool. Yeah. Um. So are you, you have any more time? Or do you gotta, I know we've been about an hour now. Mm -hmm. um do you uh i, I don't want to take yeah. too much of your time no i mean like I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or if we want to go through that chat and see if yeah, um, up. yeah actually before we go to the chat i do want to ask you one more thing mm -hmm. what's that tell me about because you're obviously genetically gifted um what are your eating habits i see you eating sugary shit i would describe it as <laughs> most of the yeah. time and i i love sweets too don't get yeah. me wrong i eat a lot of sweets and pizza and things like that i love it but mm -hmm. um it seems like that's all I see you eat. So tell yeah. tell me about your eating habits. 
Well, let's just say um, I can, I, uh, as the full snack developer, I have, to put on a, I have to put on a bit of facade because I, I, I do like my snacks, but like when it comes to it, I actually like, it's, uh, it's a lot of like chicken and pasta. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, a lot of chicken and pasta. I'll, I'll, um, I do have a really high metabolism. So sometimes to fill in the extra carbs, like there's just no other way I can get them down. Unless I'm having three protein shakes a day, I have to, I just have to eat some garbage to, to yeah. be able to, because my genetics and, and you know what, I'm, I'm working with my buddy to create a plan for, you know, smaller, smaller, usually it comes with, you know, programming, smaller dudes that want to put on some size, um, working on a workout plan there. But um, my genetics, I don't know if you've seen any of those pictures of me when I was in high school, but like, just, I was twiggy. Um so for me to put on, you know, and keep maintaining, I, I just have to like a lot of time just eat anything. Yeah, I think uh, so personally, um, I've always my metabolism isn't great. It's not like super fast. It's sort of in the middle. So um, for me personally, seeing a person like you who can eat like that, it's like, wow, damn, I wish I could eat like that. And that's awesome <laughs> to me. To me, that looks awesome. And I'm sure it's all the big people out there. That looks awesome just to be able to eat whatever you want. But yeah. I'm sure also from the smaller person's pr perspective, it's not great because <clears throat> like you just said, it's hard for you to get big. It the amount that you have to eat is probably gets uncomfortable sometimes. Like if, if you were if you were to eat um, chicken and rice and try and gain weight, it's basically impossible. Like you you'd be yeah. shitting your brains out <laughs> to, to put probably. <laughs> And, yeah. and like, so you have to, you have to like eat these, these, uh, high calorie dense foods all the time. Yeah. And that yeah. sounds great in theory, but, um, it does all kinds of things to your blood sugar. So, you know, mm -hmm. you're probably going up and down all the time and yeah, I mean, you're going to get sick of it. It's, it's not as great as I think people, a lot of people think it would be. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it, that's exactly it. You know what? It, it, and, and you're nail on the head. You're either on one end of the scale or the other, and the other seems awesome. You know, always. It's always like, no, I want whatever <laughs> those other people have. It's like yep. that's it's always how it is. But I've learned to just kind of whatever. It's what it, I mean. It's way you she are, goes. Yeah, yeah. You are how you're made, and and we all have our different types of struggles, and we just make the best of all of them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's take let's take a look at this chat here. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll go up to the top. Uh, most of it is just saying hello, big fan. <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, shout out from India. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, shout out, shout out. I love your Instagram videos. My Instagram videos are my worst videos, by the way. I I hate them. I want to take them off YouTube. <laughs> Just so, yeah. so that everybody knows. No. I don't take it down because everybody's always telling me how much they help, but there's so many things wrong with that course. I did it for free. I didn't plan. I should have planned. I just I just would wake up every day and be like, well, let's build some part of this. Here we go. Yep. Anyway. Uh, dude, I have a couple of those that I did in, in, in college. And I'm like, if I was ever green, it was when I was in college. And the the one video on how to install jquery into your project got like twenty five thousand views and i'm like this thing is terrible, terrible. probably yeah yeah horrible I was like, same, yeah same thing it's like uh, I, uh, I look at it i can't even watch it i can't watch it <laughs> no I, one video goes on i'm like uh, uh -huh. i have to like look away <laughs> that's 100 percent it like there are a few videos that i'm like oh yeah i'm proud of that <laughs> No, you're well, I'm proud of it. Like collectively, when you look back and you're like, I see a nice, like finished product. But when I watch it, all I see is mistakes. All mm -hmm. I see is mistakes. So I just am like, nope, can't watch it. No, but people find work. value in it. So that's, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so lots of just greetings here watching me live. How am I? I'm good, everyone. I'm great. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Oh uh, wait, hi, I'm from Tanzania. Help. Nope, that's not a question. What's the meaning of full snack? We have a question. Oh, oh that's a good one too. This is this is a fun story. Um, so uh, I'm posting pictures about my setup on Instagram. I'm just regular old Nicholas Olson 101. Um, and I I go to the grocery store, and that's right. I like when I go to the grocery store, I stock up. So I get piles of snacks, and they're gonna last me for forever, like a year. 
but I'm like, oh, wouldn't this be funny? I'll put it all over my setup like I'm a nut that I am. So I put them all up everywhere and I do the post and, you know, people are liking it. And uh, who, who uh, let me, who's the tag? Tallest Thomas hits me up and he's like, dude, you're not a full stack developer. You're a full snack developer. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's funny. That's funny. And I just kind of let it go. And then developer, I don't know, on Instagram developers, like he's got like 64,000. He, he hits me up and we kind of been chatting back and forth. He's like, dude, if you don't make that your handle right now, he's like, he's like, you're dead to me. And I was like, <laughs> all right. I'll, I was like, that's better than having numbers in your name or whatever. You know, like, I'm like, okay. Um, I just put it in. I was like, wouldn't that be, I was like full snack. I bet there's some, and you know, the brand and graphic design starts going in my head. I'm like, here we go. This is it. And then it just, it just blew up. People thought like got, thought it was hilarious out of like the, you know, the, the connection between, you know, all developers like the snack and coding. So. And well, and there's the term full stack developer too. Right. right. Yeah. Like the, the, the wordplay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's great. I think it's a great name. It, yeah. it works. And you're uh, uh, a snack pig. So like, <laughs> It's, right it's that's too perfect yeah. <laughs> yeah uh all right let's see what else we got here mitch do you know soft uni or soft uni.bg i have no idea what that is maybe nick does soft uni it rings a bell but i can say it's not part of my normal stack <laughs> sorry friends uh let's see we look like brothers wow this hey. guy just indirectly <laughs> told me that i have gifted genetics <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're gonna take away it's just a headshot but no for sure We're no no, no genetically yeah. yeah i'm genetically gifted that's what yeah. that's what he's saying here 100%. thanks thanks for that comment <laughs> yeah nailed it nailed it uh let's see 25 to four grand oh that's your no no he didn't mean 25 to four grand he made 2500 to four grand for his his base charging i'm sure that's what yeah. he meant. yeah 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 uh hello hi okay Looks like yeah. uh, that's about it. Sweet. Awesome. So uh -huh. thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming on here. I had a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad to get to know you. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I love uh, I love being able to like face to face communicate with like people that I know on like Instagram and I follow on there. So this is this is awesome. I really appreciate you bringing me on here. Did you did you you follow me on Instagram? Yeah, pretty sure I do. I was like, oh, okay. If not, I need to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty cool. Pretty cool, dude. Yeah, pretty, pretty neat. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I enjoyed getting to know you, and you yeah. know, maybe we can do this another time in a year or something like that. When you got some more exciting projects that you're working on, you got two, sort of three businesses now, so maybe you'll have yeah. eleven by then. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. I like serial entrepreneur. Yeah, serial. Yeah, was that you? I can't remember if that was you who said that. I heard that term the other day serial entrepreneur and i thought that was really funny you're like yeah. a serial killer but for entrepreneurship for businesses because we slay it for business <laughs> i like that we're doing the business then we're getting business done <laughs> okay well um, uh thanks for coming on and enjoy the rest of your day and i'll be watching your stories sweet thanks so much man have a good one take care yeah bye